Now it gives me great pleasure to welcome our MC for this evening. Sean McDowell, recently retired after 41 years on the radio in Pittsburgh. When he started as a disc jockey in 1978, people were still playing vinyl records. And now I understand they're playing them again. <laughs> Sean began his career at WYDD Radio in New Kensington. But he spent several years at WFFM Radio in Braddock, which was in a building next to where the Superior Motors is today. You probably remember him best for his 26 years, that's more than a quarter of a century, <laughs> of rocking Pittsburgh at WDBE Radio. John has deep roots in the Mon Valley. His father was the late TV newscaster Al McDowell, who I'm sure many in the room, including myself, remember very well. He was born in Clareton, and his grandfather, John J. Mullen, was a former mayor of Clareton. So it's just quite interesting history. He is now enjoying some well-deserved time off, and incidentally, today is his birthday. CEO and Jason and Tozier, who uh, is the one who we're all reading from Jason's <laughs> script that he's been working on for the last two months. And he's also our photographer today. Like, thank you so much, Jason. And thanks to April. Great job, April Luther, as, well. um, as Mary mentioned, I, uh, my parents are from Clareton. My mom from uh, Clareton. My father from Wilson. And if it wasn't for my mom and dad meeting in the Mon Valley, I wouldn't have been invited here. <laughs> I, I worked in Braddock for eight and a half years. I remember being at the top of the roller coasters at Kennywood and looking across the Mon at this town, a booming town it was when I was in high school in the, the 1970s. Braddock, I and who knew that I would wind up working in Braddock for eight years of my life. The Mon Valley has always meant so much to me because it's where my family is from, both sides of my family. All my aunts and uncles, my grandparents, as uh, Mary mentioned, my uh, grandfather was the mayor of Clareton, John J. Mullen. And this is back in the 30s or the 40s uh, when my uh, grandfather, along with being the mayor, he also was in charge of or helping out the United States steel workers helping the workers to unionize, to organize as a union. Well, the company back then had their own squad of associates, so my grandfather and his associates would clash all the time. My mother would tell me that her father, my grandfather, would come home with a black eye, a bloody nose, uh, a bloody lip because both sides had been dealing with each other, the company <laughs> side and the unionizing side. That's my family history, so the Mon Valley has always been, this is where my family is from. I'm so thrilled that MBI invited me here tonight uh, because, uh, like I say, I am from the Mon Valley as my folks were, my family, my aunts, my uncles, everybody's gone now. <laughs> I am 64 years old today. Thank you very much. I, I just wanted to remind everybody. And this is Jason. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm 64. And just to put that into perspective for the younger folks in the room, I was born in 1955. And I had to write this down because at my age now, the brain cells that I've lost over the last 40 years, in 1955, when I was born today, 64 years ago, the Korean War had just ended two years earlier. Cold milk in glass bottles was delivered to your door. The first Super Bowl wouldn't be played for another 12 years. 
the Fort Pitt tunnels and the Fort Pitt bridge didn't exist yet. <laughs> no kidding, 1955, the day I was born. This is just uh, throws me into deep <laughs> contemplation. When I was born today, 64 years ago in 1955, Alaska and Hawaii weren't part of the United States yet. <laughs> so all you younger folks understand how long ago 1955 was. Every year, the Mind Valley Initiative presents the Senator John Hines Award for Community Service to a person whose service to the Mon Valley area has gone above and beyond. Tonight's honoree also celebrated a birthday, his 30th, and I was talking to State Representative Austin Davis. I remember being 30, Austin, 34 years ago. <laughs> In spite of his young age, Austin Davis has already devoted much of his life and career to public service. A student at McKeesport Area High School, Austin Davis served as the founder and first chair of the Youth Advisory Council, formed by then-Mayor Jim Brewster. Today, Austin serves as state representative for the 35th Legislative District. We are honoring him this evening for his continued dedication to helping the communities in the Mon Valley as they work to grow and develop. Austin has been a tireless advocate for the Valley at both the state level and his dedicated service has been key in securing resources and cooperation for several important projects. So, here to present Austin Davis with the Heinz Award, it's Laura Zinsky. She's the big boss. She's the CEO of the Mon Valley Initiative. Laura Zinsky, everyone. so hard this past year, um, just tirelessly advocating for projects that were going on throughout the Mon Valley, and we've just admired you, and we are so grateful that you went into public service, and that you put real service into that, into that role. So please come on. <laughs> Truly moving our communities forward. 
Um, so I am proud and honored to be a partner of yours uh, as we go forward to try to redevelop our communities and make sure that they're the best that they can be. Uh, I have to thank uh, my family who's here today, my wife Blair, my parents Kathy and Anchory, uh, uh, for all their love and support. Anybody who's run for office knows it's really a family affair. Uh, and oftentimes your family wears it more so than the candidate, right? We kind of tend to brush it off and people say something about us, or, but your family really holds on to it. Uh, so I just want to thank them for all their love and their support. Uh, and, and I look forward, hey, give them a round of applause. <laughs> The work that MBI is doing, uh, you know, particularly there's a project in Clareton that we've been working on for a number of years, and I, and I can remember, I know Tony Curta and Denise Johnson Clemens are here from Clareton, and I remember meeting with them early on when I first got elected, and them talking about, there they are there, <laughs> them talking about this project and talking about how important it was uh, to their community, and the only thing that I wanted to do was make sure that we delivered on that project, and that we got it across the finish line, uh, and it was not an easy lift. And there are a lot of stories I can tell uh, from talking to the governor directly about how important this project was and why we needed to get it done uh, for the people of Clareton. Because, like I said, if we are not, as government officials, going to be the first people to invest in these communities to help turn them around, why is anybody else going to do it? And we should be taking the first step and not the last step. So thank you for MBI and all the work you continue to do. I will always be a partner for as long as I'm in this office, and I continue to fight to rebuild our community. Thank you. Austin Davis, everyone, winner of the Heinz Award, thanks to the Mon Valley Initiative. And Austin, again, just turned 30 years old. And I was 30 in 1980. Compact discs hadn't been invented yet. I'd like to introduce right now April Hoover. April does a great job. She is MBI's Chief Financial Officer, and she's going to present MBI's 2019 Regional Partnership Award. April? Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, uh, so I just wanted to speak briefly for a little bit, and, and April already spoke to this a little, a little bit, but our ties to uh, the Mon Valley are deep. Um, in 2019, the food bank distributed 35.5 million meals in our Lebanon County service region. Many of those communities are right here in the Mon Valley. In fact, as April just mentioned, our warehouse is in Duquesne. The Mon is literally our backyard. And our roots go back as far as our founding. In 1980, the food bank came to be because families were struggling, being hit by the decline of the steel industry. Much of that industry located right here in the Mon Valley. The neighbors in this region matter to us, and our work with NBI is so important. Through our collaboration, we help folks sign up for staff benefits, to have access to meals beyond what the food bank can serve, provide meals to children through those difficult summer months, Encourage more participation in school breakfast programs so that kids have the nutrition they need to succeed and bring fresh produce to neighborhoods who don't have access to that fresh healthy food. Simply, when we work together, we change lives. We've got goosebumps saying that. <laughs> <laughs> My final thought before I go, I wanted to mention that when I was asked to speak to all of you today, I had this thought where I was like, oh, I'm gonna be nervous. <laughs> and it's because it's hard to get up in front of a crowd and speak by yourself all alone. It's hard to do things alone. Everything is so much easier when you have partners supporting you, supporting your work. And this little fear really made me think about how powerful partnership is. So as I stand up receiving this partnership award on behalf of our organization, Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, I really wanted to thank the Mon Valley Initiative and each and every one of you. We can't do any of this work alone. It's all of us together that make our community stronger. So thank you for this regional partnership award. We are so grateful to have partners like the Mon Valley Initiative. Great job, Megan, from the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank. And again, in 1955, when I was born, I arrived seven years before the Beverly Hillbillies debuted on TV in black and white. I'm very excited right now to get to turn the spotlight over to our community groups that will be presenting their community partnership awards. Um, before we begin, would everyone who is either presenting an award or receiving an award, could you please come forward and take a seat over here? next to the stage. I'll move my stuff. So again, everyone who is either presenting an award or receiving an award, our community groups we're talking about, uh, come on up and take a seat over here next to the stage. These winners were selected by the members of the Community Development Corporations. The awards are presented to groups and individuals who embody the MVI vision of working together to unite the communities of the Mon Valley and restore their economic vitality. Uh, in the interest of making sure everyone got a chance to be first, we selected the order for tonight's awards at random. Our first award is being presented on behalf of Turtle Creek Development Corporation. If you're not from Pittsburgh, you get busted immediately if you say Turtle Creek. It's Turtle Creek. To present that award, please welcome right now Beth Hamill, everyone. Oh. Creator knew 
either, you know, either knew her skills or predestined her to be a masterful gardener. Either way, she is and her name fits. When I first met Eileen, when we started in the garden, I wondered how much help she would be. When she gets up here, you'll, you'll see why. I mean, looking at her, she's not your typical looking farm girl. I mean, we have shovels that are bigger than her. <laughs> but yeah, she can work circles around most of us. And as I've learned, you don't mess with her. She'll be the one that'll tell you, Dale, yes ma'am, no ma'am, I'll get right on that ma'am. But with all kidding aside, Eileen is a powerhouse who has stepped up and is a main driving force of our community garden. It's called the Turtle Creek Home Plate Garden because it's on an old ball field. Okay, get that next <laughs> Not only that, but she's a terrific individual with a big heart. Now before her head gets too big to come on stage, I'd like to introduce our partner of the year, and I can say a very dear friend, Eileen Pickle. Next, Swissvale Economic Development Corporation will present the 2019 Community Partner Award. And here to make that presentation for SETCO, it's Terry Ward. Terry? Oh, you're 65, huh? I, I had a chance, um, before I retired, I interviewed one of the ZZ Top guys. And he's 70, and his name is Dusty Hill. And I said, hey, Dusty, I said, I just turned, this is last year, I just turned 63. Uh -huh. And he said to me, nice talking to you, kid. <laughs> um, I have always loved libra libraries, and I view them as wonderful, magical places. And as an English teacher, I've worked long and hard to share my feelings with my students. So needless to say, it's a great honor for me to be standing here tonight to introduce SETCO's Community Partner Award recipient, Friends of the Swissville Library. Swissville residents not only enjoy the free services provided by our library, but they, many of them are very dependent upon those services. And located on the business loop in Monongahela Avenue, the library is a community hub. It houses a senior citizen center, it hosts multiple social activities, and provides an after school hangout for many of our students where they use the computers and they do their homework. Friends of the Swissville Library is a group dedicated to meeting the needs of our community um, year long by raising funds for media acquisition, program enhancement, and even furnishing updated furniture. For example, children events. They support the summer reading initiative. They support the, um, they replace chairs and carpeting as it was needed, and they ensure that our library has an up-to-date collection of books, DVDs, and other materials that are so necessary. The Friends of the Library hosts events to support the library, including everyone's favorite, the annual Book and Bake Sale held in April and September. These funds help purchase the items and services that otherwise would not be available to the users of our library. Without the Friends of the Swissville Library, the existence of our library would be in jeopardy. And as stated by the group's president, Sharon Ramsey, quote, our children's futures depend on literacy, which is why it's so important for the community to get involved. It's with great pleasure that I introduce Sharon Ramsey from Friends of the Swissville Library. But I also want you to realize there is a whole table full of friends of the Swissville Library. Would you please stand up and recognize them?
and all the volunteers who have made us so successful in being able to provide services. Um, children's programs are really important in the community, uh, and we have a lot of people who come and enjoy the books and movies and computers, uh, being have, able to have access to the computers. And as I sat and looked, working together, it's really what it's all about. Um, we get together and um, talk about how we're going to staff the book sale and how we're going to bake the cookies and, and pretty much I do most, most of the spending of the money. <laughs> but that's what makes it fun. Um, it's a good retirement job and uh, my birthday was yesterday. <laughs> get up from the couch. There was no remote back then to change the TV channel. You had to walk across the room and actually turn a knob to change one of the three TV channels that we had. I'd like to present right now the Community Partner Award on behalf of the Pitt Carey Community Renaissance. Please welcome Mike Tobias. Hey, Mike. Good evening. Ronald Reagan once said, there's no limit to what a person can do or where they can go if they are not, they are not mine who gets the credit. That quote reminds me of Patty Cameron. She did not dedicate her life, her adult life, to pick care for the recognition. She did it because she loved pick care. Patty's been a member and past president of the Pick Care Women's Club for over 40 years. She's been a staff member of Pick Care and Camp G, a local summer camp for girls for over 35 years. She has volunteered with Mills on Wheels, St. Michael's Lady of Charity, Pitt Karen Park and Rec, Pitt Karen Free Lunch Program, and currently writes our newsletter, The Pitt Karen Pad. Mm -hmm. By giving back to the community, Patty not only follows in her parents' footsteps, but also volunteers alongside her husband of 40 years, Rick, and her three daughters, Andrea, Brooke, and Shana. On behalf of the borough of Pitt Karen, and pick care of community renaissance. I'm privileged to introduce Ms. Pat Patty Cameron. Camp G. Uh, yes, I am a member. 
I can't believe that I'm a member because I hate to camp. <laughs> but my girls loved to go, and when there wasn't enough staff, I felt they were going, I would step up. So I go. It's not my favorite thing to do, but I go. <laughs> and the Women's Club, um, we do so much for the community. We've been in, in existence since 1935. Um, we now have board meetings in my home. I volunteer my home to host those meetings once a month. And we have dwindled in membership. When I joined, I was pregnant with my second child. And we had 100 members. We now have about 25. So as every organization, things have changed. People have changed. Places have changed. But there's always room to volunteer and to step up. I am grateful for this award. Thank you so much. Thank you, Patty, and thank you, Mike. Uh, I'd like to welcome to the microphone right now, and this is a thrill for me because I worked at Braddock at FM 97 for eight years from 1981 until 1988, and we were right across from the Edgar Thompson Works, and um, the Royal Cafe in a little bar was right next door to the radio station, and I understood quickly in 1981, the bar was packed at 7 a.m. in the morning because it was the shift change at ET right across the street. 11 to 7, 7 to 3, 3 to 11. So everybody had their shots and their beers at 7 a.m. in the morning right next door to the radio station on Braddock Avenue. Braddock is also the very first time I ever hit a number on the street. <laughs> My bookie was a part of uh, the, the deli down the street. I forget what the name of it was, but it was the first time I ever hit a number of cash in a brown paper bag. <laughs> I'd like to welcome right now, she is the mayor of Braddock. It's Sade Jones. She's here to present the Community Partner Award on behalf of Braddock Economic Development Corporation, Ms. Mayor. I always wanted to help people um, from the time I grew up. 
And helping kids is what I do every day. I work in mental health. I'm a therapist. I'm a counselor. We work in schools in the area. Um, so when I took this on in Braddock, I, you know, I'm a part of Clarenship. I'm a part of Braddock Ship. I've been a part of the key sports. So the Mon Valley to me has always been um, a passion of mine. I've always wanted to give back because that's that's where I'm from. Um, but when I took on this Braddock um, Community Day about six years ago, um, the lady that had done it, she had said to me, she said, Jim, I'm going to warn you now, you don't want to take this on because it is a lot of work. And I said, you know, to me, that was a challenge that I wanted to embark upon. Um, and I'm glad I did because in the six years that I have done it, um, it has gotten better every year. Um, and I look forward to every year making it better. Um, so I want to thank Bedco, I want to thank Mayor Chardet, I want to thank the Borough of Braddock and General Tina Doucet. Um, I want to thank my Braddock Partnership for a Caring Community. Uh, Diane McCray is here tonight, I want to thank you for being here. Um, I have a committee of people, I can't do this alone. Uh, the Braddock Community Day Committee helps me put this event on every year. Uh, nobody can do this by themselves, so I thank them so much as well. Um, and I also thank, this place is wonderful, I thank you for the dinner, this is tremendous. Uh, I want to thank the MDI um, for doing this for us, so thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, James, and thank you, the Mayor of Braddock, Charday Jones. I have great memories of Braddock. I spent eight years of my life there. There was a great bar on Braddock Avenue, the Brandywine. I don't even know if the Brandywine is still there, but Braddock had like a, a deli. Uh, it was a, a jumping place in the, in the 80s when we were there. I'd like to introduce right now uh, to present the Community Partner Award on behalf of Downtown West Newton Incorporated. Please welcome everyone, Barbara LaFace. Last, but certainly not 
least, I want to thank my partner in crime to my right here, Kathy Montgomery. She, <laughs> silent partner, she, <laughs> she sorts and stacks and organizes flags, maintains and houses all the files, and even takes flags to the dry cleaner when necessary, and is always open-minded to my crazy ideas. So thank you, Kathy. Thank you so, so much. Great, great job, girls. Great job. January of 55. <laughs> I was born in October of 55, 15 years before Three Rivers Stadium opened. <laughs> Finally tonight, everybody, last and certainly not least, it's Judy Rager, and she is here to present the Greater Charleroi CBC's 2019 Community Partner Award. Judy? Can I pronounce your last name correctly? No, I'm sorry. Oh, Rager, I'm sorry. I said Rager. <laughs> so sorry, dude. Congratulations. the award for the person that we feel is really an outstanding volunteer in our community. Since her retirement from work, Patsy Brinker, who is right over here, has spent countless hours volunteering for charitable organizations in the services of the Borough of Shawlray. She served as a board member of the Shawlray Area School District for 10 years and spent many years serving on the boards of the, of, uh, the board, the, I'm sorry, the Shawlery Area School Education Foundation, which provides financial support. You'll have to excuse me. She just handed this to me this, this evening, and I didn't get a chance to really look over it. Okay, let's go back here. She was on on the board of the Shawlery Area School District Education Foundation, which provides financial support to perform arts, athletics, and other extracurricular programs for public school students. She is also on the board of the John Tenor Library and the Greater Shawlery Development Corporation, of which she is currently the treasurer. Patsy is also the president of the Shar Theme Club, a woman's organization to promote education, youth development, and civic engagement in Shawlery. She's always willing to be on the, at uh, downtown activities, selling things, and uh, carrying on flea markets for the library, Anything that you ask her to do, she is willing to do. As, a chief, as our member, Greater Shawlery Development Corporation, Patsy is willing to spend the day planting flowers in our park at Meadow Park. She's willing to make cotton candy and end up being all pink <laughs> to uh, make money for our park. And she works enthusiastically and goes beyond even planting flowers in our uh, park. She has made uh, uh, box shrubs uh, to, in the shape of EQT because they have donated to us. She is very enthusiastic and goes beyond the call of duty at many times. She never says no, and we are very, very happy to have her receive this award. Another thing I do want to tell you, she was uh, uh, chairman of a committee for the Shawlery Area School District, and it was a $15 million project, and she was the chairman and overseer of the, state, the building of a stadium and many other buildings in the community. I would like to introduce her to you now. Patsy?
everyone uh, presenting the Greater Charleroi CDC's 2019 Community Partner Award. Well, that's it for the award portion of tonight's ceremony. This is a beautiful place, the Sunset Room. This is a beautiful place. Thank you so much to the bartenders and uh, all the folks working the food and being so helpful with the front door. Joe Flynn, Vice Chair of the uh, Mon Valley Initiative Board, Joe Flynn has a few final thoughts, but before he speaks, I just wanted to say again uh, how grateful I am to be invited to this event because my family is from the Mon Valley. I was born in McKeesport Hospital, and uh, I had a summer job a long time ago with American Bridge, and I uh, had a chance to spend a few weeks at the Duquesne Works right down from Kennywood. Uh, Clareton Works and also the Urban Works, the mill on the hill. This would have been 1975 maybe, and I had hair down to here. I had an American Bridge hard hat on that didn't fit because of my hair that was down to here. I would wear white painter's pants to the mill, and I had to go out and check the iron workers and check the boiler makers on the job, and they just abused me like you can't imagine. <laughs> hair down to here, summer, this is college kid for a summer job. Anyway, thank you so much, and Laura, thank you for inviting me. Jason, thank you. Uh, Mary Carol, thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, let's introduce right now Joe. Joe, come on up. Joe Flynn, Vice Chairman of the Mon Valley Initiative Board. Thank you so much, everybody. Well, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is we're finishing about 20 minutes early. The bad news uh, the planner said, I can't quit before 9 o'clock. <laughs> so sit back, relax, and get out of here. <laughs> what are you laughing? You're the one who told me I couldn't do this. Um, thank you all for coming. We've had some people leave, I know. Uh, congratulations to the folks who received the various awards. There are a couple other people who ought to be thanked, especially if Jason has stopped taking pictures. Uh, three people to my left. Grant Cole, Jordana, I want to give personally a special thank you to Jason. All of those of you who saw the MBI signs as you came up the hill or down the hill, I was told they were there last year. I missed them. I think I got here in time for dessert as I kept trying to find this road. So that alone made the, uh, the event work for me tonight. Uh, there's one other group we haven't talked about or that we alluded to, and that's the staff of NBI who makes all of these things possible, whether it's the uh, housing programs, the job placement programs, working with HUD, various intermediaries to, to help people get into the homes. And if that group is who is here would stand up, they deserve a round of applause too.
usually we take these programs that somebody spent a lot of time writing and developing. And for many of us, they end up in the bottom of something. If you haven't looked through this program, the development of the theme for tonight, the, the description of the various folks and what folks have done, the description of what MBI is, is worth your time and effort. You came to thank them, you came to celebrate this night, read about it, and it will bring you back next year, which is the real goal, I hope, for all of this. It's a pleasure to serve on this board that Mary Carroll leads. It's a pleasure to be involved. Did I say leads? <laughs> I did, didn't I? I'm too polite. Leads with a D. Uh, although that could be a message that some of us are leaving. I don't know. At any rate, uh, it's a pleasure to be on it. It's a joy to work with Laura and the staff with all that goes on. Hope to see you next year. Drive safe. Don't everybody bolt for the door at the same time. We're still ahead of time. Thanks for coming. Good night.